Is it a shakedown? You better believe it's a shakedown. It's a completely goes around the legal process. The, <laughs> the message this sends to foreign investors, be careful here because the United States can resemble a banana republic overnight with the wrong president and in it, charge. And it teaches them how vulnerable they are if the politicians decide to target the stock price, which they can do. I don't get it, Richard. I mean, help me here. You've got the Iraqis protesting about electricity shortage, basic needs, pretty basic stuff. Um, we've got oil piling up on the beaches, jobs still in the dumps, workplace safety, number one issue. And the critics of the president, it seems from both right and left, are most roiled by his response to BP. And the right's going mad that he manages to extract $20 billion for a repair fund. Right. Um, you know, I mean, I think the Republican Party here is really demonstrating that it is the defenders of corporate America. That That's their paymasters, and that's what they're doing here. Um, the response from the left, you know, to, to, to Obama, I think, has more to do with um, the lack of details on the climate bill that, that he offered, and, or an energy bill. Um, so he's getting hit, I think, pretty hard from, from both directions. Ari Melber in The Nation magazine wrote about right and left coming together, comparing Charles Krauthammer's response to Obama's speech on energy a week ago and, and Rachel Maddow's. I'm making that point, that they're both saying um, there was a lack of detail. But I'm not sure there's as much coming together, exactly. No, no. There's a there's sort of convergence, I think, in, in beating up on the, on the president. And it was, to my mind, also a, a pretty lackluster speech. Um, you know, the thing about the Republican response, though, which is interesting, is Joe Barton has been singled out because he, he said that Obama, you know, shook down BP and he apologized to, to, to BP for um, the America's response. Um, he, he later recanted that. Um, and he was actually repudiated by people in the Republican Party, including uh, Joe Cow from, from Louisiana, Haley Barber. Um, but you know, the proof is really in the pudding. So I don't really care what Joe Barton says yeah. and how many people stand up there during congressional testimony and um, you know, lay into Tony uh, Hayward, uh, the CEO of BP. What matters is how are they going to vote on climate change legislation and energy legislation. So there, I think you have to look at Mary Landrieu, Democrat, huge a recipient of oil money over the years. Um, other Republicans from the Gulf states um, who are you know, totally going after BP um, with lip service, but where are they going to be well, when it comes down to the votes? Good question. And where is this gonna, guy going to be? This is Mitch McConnell apologizing for Barton's apology for his lack of apology or call for an apology. So I think this is apologizing for an apology for a call for, for an, an apology. apology. Here you right. go. <laughs> if Republicans were in charge, this is the guy who'd be overseeing BP. I apologize. He apologized to BP and called the recovery fund a tragedy. Senator, how do you counter the Democrats' argument that Republicans care more about oil companies than they do about the environment? Well, of course, that's uh, nonsense. I couldn't uh, disagree with Joe Barton more. Uh, BP doesn't need an apology. They need to apologize to us, and they certainly need to cover all the cost of the uh, cleanup and the economic uh, damages as well. And they're going, they're going to. I mean, this is the debate not just on Fox News. No, I mean, you know, the, recovering the costs of the spill should be the minimum. I mean, that should have been settled on day one. And the fact that now we're weeks into the tragedy and we're still debating whether or not the $20 billion fund is enough. And by the way, you know, that's the floor for, for what BP is going to compensate for. And it doesn't actually then reduce the lawsuits that may happen, um, the fines from the EPA. None of that was taken off the table. Although so it wasn't a quid pro quo. We hope it's a floor. I mean, the president says it's not a cap, but I haven't heard it out of BP's mouth. Right, right. Let let me ask you, I went to this Tea Party rally. Yeah. It was very small, 20 people, about an hour outside of New York, and they were listening to the pitches of two primary uh, candidates who would like to run against Chuck Schumer on the Republican side. This conversation about the $20 billion, while we can joke about it, and while your point is very good, how will these people actually vote, right. it resonates. I mean, there is mm. a concern about private property, whether it was the private property of those who had lent to GM and saw their collateral kind of seized by the government, or the BP investors who, as you heard there, um, maybe see a, a threat to their stock price uh, by this use of presidential power. The left needs to address this, I think, absurd though we right. think it is. Um, I mean, that just, if that's true, I, it's a really um, screwy sense of sympathy. Um, what about the private property of the shrimp farmers? What about the private property of the business owners, the restaurant owners? Um, what about the public property, which is the Gulf? Um, 
where is the concern for small people, as BP calls them, right. um, their uh, you know, well-being, their, their ability to make money, their livelihoods? Um, to have sympathy for BP in this, in this instance, um, you know, I think that really shows what the Tea Party is. It's, it's, it's a, a party masquerading. It's a corporation, really, masquerading as a, as a political movement. Well, Richard Trumka said to the Campaign for America's Future this last week, our politics seems to be a, about a choice between apostles of hate masquerading as populists and voices of complacency masquerading as progressivism. Well put? Yeah, I think, I think that's very well put. And I think... Um, you know, part of what rankles the left about Obama's response to this is that he hasn't taken, you know, really the offensive, um, laying out specifically what an energy plan is going to be, um, or even getting rid of some of, you know, these liability caps. I mean, I know Democrats are pushing that, but, but you know, he really needs to come out, you know, and, and totally change the regulatory atmosphere here and also the, the, the legal uh, context in which this happened. And finally, before you go, we've got about 30 seconds, but there are a lot of rumors swirling about Rahm Emanuel. You think he'll be here at the, month, at the end of the month? Uh, what, what are the rumors? I don't the know. The rumors is he might have to step down or he might resign, go do something else. Talk has been heard about him concern, his concern about the time he gets to spend with his young family. Oh. Wow. Um, you know, I think... Uh, you know, it's like a hydra. You know, cut cut it, cut that head off, and you're going to get another. Uh, you know, <laughs> I think centrist Clintonite in that position. All right, Richard Kim. You can find out more at thenation.com. We'll have links to all of Richard's articles and a whole lot more. So check it out.